there's no, there's nobody helping you. Like, you know, with every camera drone that I test out for The Verge, if you let go of the sticks, it just sits there. With this one, if you let go of the sticks, it's gonna fall basically out of the sky. You always have to be working the throttle and like, I, I don't know, what, what's, what's, what's the difference? It's like taking the training wheels off. <laughs> Drop it. Oh. You just hit the ground. Oh, <laughs> shit. Hey everybody, it's Ben Popper here for CES 2017. I'm not actually at CES, I'm in the desert near Boulder City, just outside the restricted airspace for Las Vegas. That's because we're here for the CES of drones, a place where everybody can fly these aircraft without having to worry about cutting somebody's nose off. And the exciting thing today is we get to try out the Draco. In the past, when you wanted to have a racing drone, you had to build it yourself. You had to know how to program and how to solder. This is the first racing drone you could just buy off the shelf and go 100 miles an hour. What are the pieces that make this a racing drone and you know differentiate it from like the DJI Phantom that everybody knows? It's basically like trying to compare like a Ferrari to just like a general minivan or something like that. <laughs> like it's the, in terms of like the general idea is the same, but everything is just more powerful. Right. Well, yeah, obviously you got four motors, four props on this. Required to fly, you've also got a camera up the front here. So this is the HD version of the Draco. So this actually streams 720p with almost zero latency. So this system is very fast and that's required for racing. So you have to be able to dodge gates, dodge whatever you're flying around. So, you know, I've flown a lot of drones doing reviews, but these are, you know, camera quads for consumers. Yeah. I feel like I would have no idea how to handle something that goes 100 miles an hour. I mean, is, is it safe to like put this on the shelf at Best Buy where anybody can grab it? Yeah, I, I would say the, the nice thing about them is that you can t tone them down so that if you're just learning, you can go beginner settings and that kind of lowers it down. So you won't be able to go 100 miles per hour, maybe you can go like 30, kind of around the backyard. If you break something or if something is wrong, everything is modular on this device in some shape or form. If you break a motor, arm, pop that out, all the electronics internally well protected, So, but if you still manage to break it, replaceable. I mean, I've flown a many, many drones, but not a drone that goes 100 miles an hour and is full manual. And it's different when you have like the FPV on because like you're, you don't have that situational awareness. So many ways this could go wrong for me or for the people around me. <laughs> okay, so they brought me out here where I'm far away and maybe can't hurt anybody. And I'm gonna do my best to uh, fly this race drone, not crash or kill myself. Should be fun. All right, here we go. You ready? Ugh. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh, too far. Okay. How's that? Better? Am I coming down? Yep. You just hit the ground. Oh, shit. <laughs> Why? Let's go see what's left of this drone. They were gonna break it down for parts anyway. I was just helping disassemble it. Oh man. Sorry about that little guy. You're still in one piece. Well, I've flown a lot of drones. I thought I knew what I was doing, but as soon as I put those FPV goggles on, it was a whole different ballgame. Still got a lot to learn. CES claims another victim. Fly safe, kids. <laughs> 